gremlins. Happy Halloween! Today, to celebrate Halloween, I'm planning on drawing a witch based on me, my personality and my interests. A witch sona, if you will. I'm starting by writing out some important traits to include. As well as the witch themselves, I'm also drawing a few of her props. While I currently don't have the means or time to make this design into a physical costume, I am drawing it with the idea that eventually it will become real. I sketched out the character with her base outfit first. She has a loose pirate-style shirt, a corset belt, a real belt hanging with pouches, and boots. It took me a while to decide on pants for this character, and in the end I gave them a two-tiered skirt with mushroom designs embroidered around both hems. The witch also has a pointed witch's hat. The hat is covered in patches of moss, two different types of mushrooms, and has vines around the hat band. Her boots are also overgrown with moss and mushrooms. As this witch is based on me, the witch's asymmetrical hairstyle is based on my current haircut. The character has a lot of details in the jewellery, which is part of the reason this piece took so long to draw. I gave them mismatched earrings. Each one is a mushroom with a crystal as a stem, but one is a fly agaric mushroom and the other is an unidentified brown mushroom. She has star studs as secondary piercings, and some rings around her upper ears. Around her neck is a simple black choker, a short necklace with a moon pendant, and a longer necklace with a crystal pendant. When I drawn this base sketch with body and outfit details, I copied the sketch and created a variant of the character wearing a cloak over her clothing. Instead of her appointed hat, she has a deep hood on her head, and is wrapped in a long cloak. The cloak is fastened with a clasp I need to exist in real life. Two frogs connected with a chain that holds the cloak closed. The hem of the cloak is embroidered with ferns and mushrooms. One arm holds part of the cloak back to reveal the same base outfit underneath. The cloak is growing several patches of moss. This witch's familiar is a frog, my favourite species of frog in fact. This frog is a Vietnamese mossy frog, which looks like it was custom designed to fit my ideal aesthetics. The witch's frog familiar perches on her shoulder. His name is Mossy, although I welcome suggestions if you have a better name for him. I also designed a staff for this witch. It is a crooked tree branch growing with even more mushrooms and moss, and a few vines wrapped around it. At the top of this staff, enclosed in wood, floats a gemstone. That gemstone concentrates magic. As much as I wanted to stick with my green colour scheme, it made more sense for a personal witch sona to use a stone that has actual meaning to me. Therefore, this stone is my birthstone, the topaz. Topaz can be green, but they are most recognisably orange, so the gemstone is a pop of orange in a very green and brown image. Speaking of colour schemes, the rest of the colour scheme for this character is based on my personal colour scheme. When I open my wardrobe, the colours I see are dark green, olive green, black, and some brown and white. As for jewellery, it's all silver, since that goes with my skin tone. My colour scheme for this character is dark green, brown, black, and some pops of light green, with silver jewellery. The colouring of this image involved a lot of switching between the two outfits, so this footage might be a little hard to follow. Since the outfit is the same on both, excluding the cloak, almost all the colours appeared on both. The image also includes way more coloured outlines than most of my images. The moss patches, the vines, the mushrooms, and the jewellery all have different coloured lines, as do the details on Mossy the Frog. Coloured outlines take longer than black ones, due to the constant switching of layers and moving around the canvas, but they give the image more detail and dynamics in my opinion. The outfit is fairly dark in colour, but tracks with how I normally dress. I already own a homemade pirate shirt, not a particularly well-made one, but it has held up. However, that pirate shirt is off-white in colour, and I gravitate more towards black as my neutral of choice. Therefore, I gave this witch a black shirt. Someday I will make a black pirate shirt, and learn from my mistakes on the last attempt. Over the shirt, the witch is wearing a brown corset belt. As a last minute addition, I put some moss in patches on that belt to add some lighter green contrast. The regular belt and pouches are also brown. In one pouch, there are a couple of paintbrushes, an homage to being an artist. The other pouches don't have visible contents, but knowing me, they would probably be filled with random pebbles, bottle caps and tabs, buttons and a phone. I am a technology addicted magpie. The skirt is dark green with brown and green mushroom and fern embroidery. The cloak is very dark green, almost black, with monotone green embroidery. The hat, under all its growth, is straw. It took a lot of tries to get a good colour. I recolored the hat more than anything else. The boots are brown, over fishnetted legs. Because of how long the outline and colouring took, and the fact that this is a character concept image and not a scene, I didn't make either a background or do any shading. Shading might just make the detail harder to see, and I worked hard on that detail. Also, this drawing is already taking three hours, and I didn't want to keep drawing. The skin and eyes are the same colour as mine, to my best estimation. The hair on the shaved side of the head is also the same colour as mine. The green hair is not exactly as accurate. My hair is green, I've been dyeing it for a few years now, but it's currently a much more faded green. The dark shade of the character's hair reflects my ideal hair colour I want, but have not yet maintained. 
If you know any hair dye brands that offer this colour, let me know. I have not yet found the perfect brand for my vision. The ears are also not technically accurate to how I look, however they might as well be. I bought silicone elf ears online a few months ago and have worn them almost every day since. As mentioned at the beginning of this video, I hope to eventually turn this character design into a costume. This will not be achievable for a while, as I don't have the spare budget for the amount of supplies this would take. I have technically started this look, however. I already made myself an overgrown straw witch's hat. My physical hat is a work in progress. It has moss and some vines, but I haven't gotten around to adding any mushrooms yet. I made it by unraveling a thrifted straw hat and gluing the ribbon of straw to a cardboard cone for shape. This hat is the first step toward becoming that fantasy character I desire to be. This character was very fun to design. I love fantasy characters, and it was a really fun challenge to create one based on my own aesthetics and extreme interest in mushrooms, moss, frogs, and the colour green. They are maximalist and detailed and overgrown and look like they live in a forest, and that's all I aspire to be. It will take a lot to create this costume, but I know it will be really fun. Happy Halloween to everyone. Stay safe and have fun if you are celebrating. I'll see you all soon. Until then, bye!